with everyone in the world with their own view. Ever wonder if God has a view? And, and that's what the show's all about. What's God's view versus our view? Topics that affect our daily life. Empowering and inspiring. Right. To develop a heart, a kingdom mindset, you know. It's like, because God does have a view. Your host, Dr. Trudy Simmons, The Christian View. Hi, and welcome to The Christian View. I'm your host, Dr. Trudy, and we love taking today's hot and challenging topics and weighing against the Word of God because God has a view, and I believe His view needs to be out now more than ever before. You know, I just want to thank all of you for inviting us into your homes, and thank you for all the letters that you send and the prayer requests that you send. I read each one of them, and we pray over every one of them, so thank you so much. Um, today, I have the privilege of interviewing someone I've been trying to interview for over a year. Um, his name is Michael Lee Hand, and I have his lovely wife, Laura, with us today as well. Thank you all both for being thank here. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to be talking about your life uh -huh. and the book you wrote. It's called Ascent from Darkness, How, How Satan's Soldier Became God's Warrior. Um, I would love for you each all to get this book. It's an amazing, amazing story, amazing testimony. Um, your life is just a, a testament of just the goodness of God. And so I'd love to share your story. But the first question I really want to ask you is you had a choice to, to serve the evil or you had a choice to serve God and you chose to serve Satan. Right. Why did you make that choice? I thought God was both good and evil. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I grew up like that. My grandmother kind of instilled that in me young. And so in my life, if God created everything, which I believed in God, mm -hmm. but I believed he both was good and evil because he created everything. Right. And my life was a wreck, was a mess, always was since I was a child. So I was the rebel and I thought, well, if this is the way it's going to be and you're not there for me lovingly, mm -hmm then I'll just serve the, the other side of you. I'll just serve the enemy. Right. And that's what got me into it, so. You know, you, you talk about in your book early on that you, you had two statues above your bed. Right. And you would pray to them every day, and you, you felt like prayers weren't getting answered. Right. You, you grew up in turmoil and chaos, and so you were done with that, and you smashed them, and then you started praying to Satan. Right. And at that point, you kind of felt this overpowering presence. Right. Yeah, I cut their heads off, buried them in the backyard, and I mm -hmm. thought that's the last I'm going to, you know, attempt to um, serve the good side, so right. to speak. So if God was both good and evil, and I thought he was coming after me, then I might as well serve the bad side and see what rewards there were for me there. Mm -hmm. I, knew, I knew there there was something there for me, so. And how long did you serve Satan? Well, I didn't start until I was 50, uh, let me see, no, 37 years old. Okay. So. It, it culminated from childhood until I was 37. Mm -hmm. Just, again, more turmoil, more havoc in my life, uh, everything going on in my life to where I finally made the decision, you know, this is it. Right. And I went, had just gone through a divorce and lost my kids, and mm -hmm. I thought, hey, okay, this is it. Right. I'm just going to go ahead and go full-fledged and, and serve the enemy. And how did your life start changing when you committed your life to Satan? It was pretty cool, actually. <laughs> it wasn't really, but right, then. Right, right. At that point, yeah. You know, I, I started a company, and I was doing well with it. Uh, you know, because Satan, he'll, he'll give you stuff. Right. He can perform miracles. And I, I, you know, I went to a bookstore and got the Satanic Bible and Book of Shadows and started reading on Anton LaVey and, mm -hmm. and just kind of followed his path, which is really an athe atheist. He was an atheist. He right. wasn't really a Satanist. But uh, so I wanted that path to be kind of the rebel of so-called the church, you know, forget it. I'm just going to serve the evil side and we'll, we'll see what that, ha what right. happens there. So. And what all entailed? So there's different, are there different levels in the satanic religion? Yeah. There, there, you know, the, 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 probably the most prominent form is just narcissism. Mm -hmm. And that can be inside the church, outside the church. Right. Absolutely. Anytime we're just serving ourselves, that's how Anton LaVey believed. He didn't really believe in Satan mm -hmm. or God. Right. It's just all about self, which is narcissism. So we see that now it's just getting more and more prevalent. So my, I always teach that the highest form of Satanism is narcissism. Right. Because it's disguised. You don't know, because if we're not serving Christ, we're, if we're not actively serving Christ, we're passively serving Satan. Right. No matter what you're in, you know, whether you're a Christian or not. Mm -hmm. And so my, my thoughts were, you know, I might, just might as well serve him. Mm -hmm. So I started with Levian Satanism and then went to theistic after about eight or so years. Okay. 
So I believed in God, but I wanted God to be Satan. I wanted him to be the dark side of God, who I right. thought God was, because I didn't know. If you think about it, it's like a kid that has been tortured and they don't really know God. If I had known what love was back then, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have never, <laughs> I'd never right. served Satan. Right. I didn't know. So the choices I made, were, were they my choices? Sure, but they were made on, on false, uh, you know, f false beliefs. Right. You know, out of period. woundedness, out, out, of, of, out of loneliness. Hurt, out of woundedness. Right, and, right. and that's what I see so much in the church today is people that go to church, they're, um, you know, they claim to be Christians, yet they go through life unhealed. Right. And it's just... So when you are, when you are in your, the, the depths of the Satanist rituals and things like that, what did you, what inspired you the most at that point to keep going deeper? No, I was successful. I had a successful company. Had all, the things of the flesh were coming at me. You know, everything, you know, you know sex, everything else was, was just prevalent. Right. So we're, I'm, I'm satisfying all the gratification I can get in the flesh. Well, that's a good thing. Right. It seems like sin, sin's fun for a season. So, but that's all temporal. I didn't realize how temporal it was, and all that thing passes. Right. And, and you can't get enough of any of that. You can't get enough money. You can't get enough sex. You can't get enough of anything temporal. Right. We just want more. We're greedy people. I mean, humans are greedy. So, mm -hmm. all that started coming to me, and I'm going, well, I'm serving the right God now. Right. Because I didn't know the other side. Because He was answering your prayers. Right. And you didn't feel like God was answering your prayers, but Satan was answering your yeah. prayers. So it drove you closer to Him yeah. versus closer to God. We've got to take a short break. We'll be right back more here on The Christian View. Don't go away. And welcome back to The Christian View. We're talking to uh, Michael Lee Hand and his wife, Laura, about um, how he was Satan's warrior or Satan's soldier and became God's warrior. When we went to break, you were talking about how Satan was answering all your prayers and mm -hmm. life was just, you were lavished with everything you could ever want. Um, but when we went to break, you said, but there's always a hook. So let's yeah. talk about what that hook is. The hook is death. Uh, you know, sin, sin's fun for a season, but the hook was, that's not, that's not, uh, it's eternal, all right, but it, Everything like that, that it's temporal passes away, right. as it says in the Word, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I have all these Christians coming at me trying to get me saved and hitting on me hard and all that stuff. And over and over, God just kept on sending people my way. And I'd turn them down. I'd make fun of them. I'd put spells on them or magic whatever on them and uh, try to, to run them off. But there's a few that just wouldn't quit. You right. know? And, and they just loved on me regardless who I was. And that's love never fails. And that's what eventually brought me to this side. So. Brought you to freedom. Yeah. So when you were walking in the dark side, were you fearful about the things you saw or the things you had to do or the things you were asked to do? No, it's intriguing. Dark side is very intriguing. That's what gets people into right. it. So it just was alluring for me. I saw stuff that you can't imagine. Right. And, and things happened around me that were just uh, kind of deepened my faith. You know, kind of, I said, this stuff is for real. Right. So it drew me in. And on, conversely, on the Christian side, that's why we want to see miracles and, and lavish things and, and just all, everything that God's doing on that side because it deepens our faith. Well, it right. does on the dark side, too. That's all right. So it, it just kept me going. Yeah. So you said casting spells and things like that. Did you actually cast spells on people and see them come to yeah. fruition? Yeah. I'd, I'd see stuff happen all the time or I could... Uh, sense things, you know, I always, uh, you know, there's, you know, people say, were well, you prophetic? I don't believe that. I just, it was, it's a gift I've had since, uh, since birth and, you know, before I, in my mother's womb. Uh, right. I could go to a, a psychic, you know, there, it's just what God you're serving. It's not, you know, it's, it, it's, it's something that's in us that God's given us at birth. It's not a, like a Holy Spirit gift. I don't believe. I think it's innate in us and right. we can use for good or evil. Right, right. Absolutely. Um, so let me ask you this. Um, you said people kept coming and, and you talk about it in your story. Some mm -hmm. people just didn't give up on you. They just, they loved you to healing. Yeah. Can we talk a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah, uh, there's a few guys, Jim Kimbrough, and I mean, there's just a lot of guys in my life, uh, men in my life, and even women. I mean, women were there doing, they're the prayer warriors, it seemed like. The men were just there to, to, to be with me, to, to just stand by me, even though I didn't want them. At times, I'd go in and out. I mean, it's like, get close to them, and then I was getting, I was detached right, right. since childhood, so I didn't want much connection. So I'd get connected, then back and forth, and finally, it just, it just kept on drawing me closer and closer. Right. Until the, you know, until the day that, 
you know, I had enough. You know, I was going to kill a pastor and uh, ended up, uh, got, I, I was found out. Okay. You know, I think my, I really think my daughter is the one that, that kind of uh, outed me on that mm -hmm. to the church. And they were, they were waiting for me. They were looking right. for me, so. How did your daughters feel about their dad being a Satanist? Well, I mean, one daughter was a believer, the other one wasn't. So the one thinks, well, I'm just, I'm just mentally ill. The other one's seeing stuff happening that most people would never see. Right. Levitation and uh, just, she'd come into my house and things were just different. She knew it. She sensed it in her spirit. She could see it. So uh, to them, one was fighting for me. The other one's thinking, well, you, my dad's gone nuts. Right, that right. Kind of thing, so. And how's your relationship with them now? Uh, it's growing. Okay. The, the one that's not a believer, believe it or not, is uh, more uh, forgiving, I would say, or more loving. She's my oldest, and, and the other one I haven't spoken to in for a while. There's okay. been some stuff happened that just, mm -hmm. I haven't spoken to her in eight years. So. Well, we serve a God of restoration and restoration. Yes, we do. So We're we'll just believe, that. believe for that with you. You know, so you, you became a born again believer. Right. And you went back into the church. How was it getting back into the church, like mainstream church, after being well, was, twenty something years in, with with this? Well, I was never church. really in church okay. to begin with, but going back, uh, you know, naturally it was a church that it took them weeks to even believe it. Mm -hmm. You know, I went to a main or big church, and it took them weeks to even kind of believe it because I was I was to. I was bad. People you know? are afraid of you. Yeah, they were afraid. Even yeah. the but it took a couple of weeks. But once they saw that, and they saw me in the front rows praising God, which I would have never done right. before. Uh, I was fearless. You know, that's when I became fearless. Is after salvation, and uh, then they welcomed me back, and you know, that's where I stayed for about eight years mm -hmm. before I moved to uh, in another church. But, right. So, how do people when they when they when they meet you and you tell them what you've your life journey, what you've been through? How do they receive you? Probably not, most not good. I'd mm -hmm. say most of the enemies I have are within the church because right. they want to see you in your sin, your past, and not who you are in Christ. I right. mean, I'm not saying most, but a good portion of the churches, and my wife's been with me at churches and seen mm -hmm. how we've been treated. Right. So I kind of shy away from that. You know, from churches, I'm not one to be in big congregations or anything anymore because I'm, I'm more of a loner, I right. guess you could say. Right. But uh, no, it's, it's like most still in the church want to look at you who you were in the past mm -hmm. and not who you are now. Right. I think it's maybe human nature. I don't know. I think so. They want to keep our past, our past sin dangling over we us. We so talk we, about it. Right. We talk how we're a new creature, new creation, mm -hmm. but then we look at people like, oh, you were an addict or you're this, and when if they'll turn back or, you know. Right. And I don't blame them for being fearful. My, my, my story got told everywhere, mm -hmm. local news, all over the place, and, you know, I understand. Right. I understand their fear. Right. But... God but. has set you free and he has changed your life. You know, but so do you see any of this going on in the U.S. today? Like is, it, is, is Satanism and, and practicing in the occult, is it getting worse in the U.S.? Do you see it kind of growing or is it kind of being pushed aside now? I think it's the third fastest growing religion. Is it? Okay. Yes. But if you just look at how we are as greed, greedy people and narcissism, that's growing. Right, definitely. absolutely. You know, materialism, narcissism is growing. So that's all we got to look at is mm -hmm. the fruit. I mean, what's, where's that coming from? It's certainly not coming from the Lord. Right. So in that aspect, I think we're all Satanists before we come to Christ. I, I, right, right. That's an interesting point. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back here with more on The Christian View. Don't go away. And welcome back to The Christian View. We're having a great but deep discussion with uh, Michael Lee Hand and his wife, Laura, about the ascent from darkness as Satan's soldier becomes God's warrior. So, Michael, you've been saved for about 15 years now. Mm -hmm. What's been your biggest challenge? Women. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, only so, knew, yeah. I only knew manipulative, controlling women right. all my life, my mom, grandmother. And mm -hmm. so the hardest thing for me, to be honest, is... is having this, not respect, I respect them, but having uh, a relationship with women like I should have. You right. know what I mean? Because it was not never like that until I got saved, so. Right. That, that respect, that mutual respect. Yeah. So you've been married to, to Laura for nine years now. Yes. Yeah, December will be nine years. Congratulations. Thank you. So just really quick, <laughs> I know it's a long story and we'll share it another time, but how did y'all meet? 
We met through his ministry okay. and it just moved really fast. And I think we were both at a place in our walk and in our lives to just kind of join forces in ministry and just combine our walk because we were so well aligned right. um, in God's plan for our lives and just felt really confident that that is what God was doing, mm -hmm. was kind of bringing it together. Um, so it moved quickly. Right. And before I knew it, I was quitting my job in California and leaving my church and my girlfriends and some friends of his hosted us an incredible wedding. And right. We loaded up all my belongings and my motorcycle and a trailer in the back of his car and we drove to Oklahoma. Home. Wow. Yeah, and just it just started our new life together. Yeah. So. Amen. I love that. Did you at yeah. any point were you were you nervous about what's life going to be like married married to Michael being an ex Satanist? Did that ever come and cross your mind? Not or? at all. I I loved that he had had that testimony. Mm -hmm. I loved that he had lived through something like that because I felt for an order, in order for, oh, we're start crying, for someone to be able to understand me, right. would have had to have also walked through a similar fire. Yes. And that's always been very important to me, to be equally yoked with someone who not only knows the Lord the way I do, but who knows um, hell right. the way I do. It's a different hell, but. Right. Um, I was no different from him, just wasn't a self-proclaimed Satanist. But, you know, we both have similar paths, similar stories, right. got saved later in life. Um, I got saved 13 years ago, okay. a couple years after him. Right. And um, just was agnostic. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's been a really incredible journey. And we started out with nothing, um, just broke to the core. Right. But um, we both have so much faith in the Lord and we were so certain that the Lord had had brought us together mm -hmm. that um, we've just been blessed along the way and it's great. Um, I don't know we just literally built our lives together from the ground up mm -hmm. like from the Oklahoma red dirt. I told up. her before we married I said <laughs> I can't provide for you I, I'm in ministry. Right. Because I think that's a misnomer to say the man or the woman I said but if you marry me God will provide for us. That's right. And he has. And I was like, don't look at me because I'm broke. So <laughs> <laughs> I can't provide for you. But he, he said God will provide for right. us. And I didn't even want a ring. I have his initial tattooed on my finger because yeah. I don't, we don't care for those things. Mm -hmm. But um, So how have you seen the Lord just providing and blessing and just showing up in your marriage? I think in, in our health, our good health and um, the Lord providing work and, and jobs that for me, a career, both of us have careers. We work outside of ministry, but I think just being blessed with doing something that uh, will provide for us that we also enjoy and we can use mm -hmm. for, for Christ's sake as well. Right. And have a ministry in the same place where we earn a living. That's, that's really good. Yeah. That's really good. I mean, God, God is faithful. And so, Michael, what would be your words to the church right now? with all that you've gone through, with all that you've seen, you've been, you went to prison, you're out of prison, all the things that you've seen, what would be your words to the, to the, the body Just of Christ? Discipleship mm -hmm. instead of cotton candy and uh, all this, you know, uh, you know, adulterous generation seeks after signs and wonders. And I think what we need is just more stories like ours. Mm -hmm. I mean, just to be told, because like we were talking earlier, people are afraid of this. They shouldn't be. They right. should be aware of what's going on right. and how susceptible we all are. Mm -hmm. Every one of us can fail. Every one of us can be prideful, which right. Absolutely. starts a fall. Uh, so to the church, it's like we need to get back to just sound teaching. Mm -hmm you know, everywhere right? And, uh, and get people involved in that. It's the word that's going to change us. It's not everything else. It's the word that my book's not going to, it may help somebody point in the right direction, but it's the word of God that's going to change us. Absolutely. And we, I, don't, I really feel out of all the 150 or couple hundred churches I've been to, and I love them all because Christ loves them all, but we need to get back to just sound, basic, sound teaching. Right. Because the gospel is a lot more simple when we're trying to make it. Absolutely. It, we try it to is. complicate it. We do because it puts us on different levels. Right. It starts as networking of some sorts that, that means I'm better than you or you're better than me mm -hmm. because you do this or I do that when actually all we need is just sound teaching. That's right. You know, we just need the gospel preached and, and the Lord to do the work. That's know. right.
And I, I want to go back to what you said. It, it, it is nothing to, it's nothing to be afraid about. I mean, Scripture does talk about we will wrestle against, we wrestle against flesh, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but the principalities right. of this dark world. And so the more we're informed, the more we know, the more we'll be able to speak God's word over the atmosphere and over the situation. And we realize that it's not just Satan, it's our flesh. Right. Because I believe in justification and sanctification. Right. Which is a lifelong process that we blame a lot of stuff on Satan that he takes credit for. Mm -hmm. And it's really not, it's our choices. Right. <laughs> it's our choices that we make <laughs> that get us in trouble. And if we stop using God as a savior and use him as Lord, you know, it changes everything. Right. He saved us, we're already saved, mm -hmm. but start using him as Lord and treat him like a Lord, then we're, we're, we're gonna not get in the trouble we get into on our, you know, on our own. Right. We don't need him to save us out of that anymore. We, we're being taught mm -hmm. and we're learning not to get in those situations right. by following his word. I, I think that is so true. What would your words be to the church, the body of Christ right now? Oh my gosh. Um, I, I would have to say just to have grace for those mm -hmm. that um, have a testimony that a lot of them could never come to fathom in their lifetime right. and um, just to share the word of God with uh, without candy coating it, mm -hmm. you know, just to be true and real and not trying to put on a performance or a show or right. um, prove, you know, I think th there's, there's a lot of people in the church that want to show that they're operating in the gifts and I think it's more important to show your fruit. Right. That you're operating in the fruit. Because we, we all have the ability to operate in the gifts, but so few operate in, in the fruit. Right. And the power of love. Yeah. I think love is, love is love huge. Is love is huge. Love is the answer. We're going to take a short break. We'll be <laughs> right back here with more on The Christian View. Don't go away. Welcome back to The Christian View. We've had a great discussion today with, with Michael and Laura. Thank you all both for being here. Um, you know, God can change any situation and any circumstance around on a dime. You've just got to believe Him, put your faith in Him, put your hope in Him. The enemy wants you to feel like you're defeated and that there's no way out, but there is always hope in Jesus Christ. Know that He is for you, He sees you, and He loves you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.